Is this homebrew feat, divine flame, balanced? Is this homebrew feat, kindly created for my character by Akira underscore Karusu, balanced? If not what would should be changed about it? It's a unique feat based on my character's background. Divine flame you were consumed by fire at birth, allowing you to perform feats that would sear others beyond recognition. Once per short rest, you can cause fire to erupt around you as a bonus action. These flames have no effect on you and last for 5 rounds. While active, you shed bright light for 10 feet and dim light for an additional 10 feet. Any creature that hits you with a melee attack while the flames surround you takes 1d4 fire damage. Additionally, if you take damage as the result of an attack and can see the attacker within 60 feet of you, you can expend your reaction to cause the attacker to take 2d6 plus your wis modifier fire damage. When you use this reaction, you gain 5 temporary hit points. Full disclaimer, I like the feat but was curious as to what other people thought of it and if it was well balanced or not. It's too strong, especially at low levels feats don't have levels or level restrictions, but the few explicitly supernatural feats are for non-humans, and so can't be taken until at least 4th level. Having access to any feat at first level is considered very powerful in a widely used ranking system for balancing homebrew races, feat selection is given the highest score of any racial feature. Divine Flame sort of combines bits of the tiefling-only feat Flames of Phlegathos from Xanathar's Guide to Everything, thanks Mike Q, and the first level spell, Hellish Rebuke, but it has few of the limiting features of either. It also has odd features that don't follow established feat conventions and make it very strong, especially for a low-level character. Odd duration. Spells and magical effects intended for combat use are usually instant, last until the end of your next turn, or have a duration of one minute. Five rounds. Isn't much of a limiting factor since most combats don't last that long. One minute is also an easier time to estimate outside of combat. Does not require concentration. Most long-lasting spell and magical effects require concentration, meaning they both cannot be combined with other such effects and have a chance of ending early if the caster is attacked. I don't think that fits the fiction here but it does make this more powerful than a comparable spell. Doesn't end when you use the special effect. Low-level spells and features that have a rider usually end in that circumstance. For example, the cantrip. Produce flame allows you to shed light from the flame for an extended period, but you can also attack by throwing the flame, doing so ends the spell. This feat gives you a repeatable effect for 5 rounds. The reaction grants two benefits. This makes its repeatability even more powerful, even though the temporary hit points don't stack. This isn't unheard of but it's strong to attack and buff with a single reaction. Attacker is potentially subject to two effects. A melee attacker could be hit for 1d4 plus 2d6 plus wisdom damage each turn for 5 turns with no action required by the character. Very strong. It has no attack roll and no saving throw. Both forms of damage are automatic. There are very few low-level sources of guaranteed damage, and none I can think of that don't expend some kind of resource. Reaction damage adds an ability score modifier. Pretty rare for magical effects in general. It also means the user deals automatic damage equal to a fighter using a greatsword 2d6 plus mod, which feels too high. It's once per short rest. Most feats and racial features granting magical spell-like abilities only allow for use once per long rest. It has no restrictions on usage. Many effects that persist without action use, like a barbarian's rage for example, have a condition that must be fulfilled to use them, or that if not met causes them to end early. Divine Flame has a fixed duration and no restrictions on movement, having to take or deal damage etc. Its limiting factors help, but not enough all that said, feats are supposed to be useful whenever you take them, this is why they usually either modify basic rules e.g. dual wielder, add brand new capabilities e.g. ritual caster, or use existing mechanics that provide scaling e.g. spells. While Divine Flame is powerful, it has some flaws which will make it less useful as time goes by. The base damage is low. 1d4 isn't going to bother anything but very low level monsters. The damage doesn't scale with level. Unlike a cantrip or a spell that can be upcast, you're stuck with 1d4 halves d6 damage forever. The temporary hit points don't scale with level. Same as the above. 5 horsepower will make a big difference at low levels, but little to none in the later tiers of adventuring. The damage type is commonly resisted. 
Fire damage is one of the most commonly resisted damage types. Inferring from the name, the flame is of holy origin, and if that means you're fighting fiends, well most of them have fire resistance. It's still a highly unusual power that doesn't expend resources, spell slots or even actions, and while in the second or third tier of play it won't be a game changer it's still free extra damage, and might dissuade low level monsters from attacking. You mention in the comments you're a rogue, so at the cost of your reaction you're adding more bonus damage on top of sneak attack each round, and it goes a long way to removing a rogue's worry about being easy to hit and damage, at low levels especially. It will also force you to choose between divine flame damage and uncanny dodge from level 5, which is a useful limiting factor but not that big a deal. So is it balanced? No it's much more powerful than other feats and breaks many rules conventions that exist for good reasons. But in terms of overall party capability, it's fairly easily taken into account by the DM if needs be. I've refrained from suggesting changes, but hopefully the lists above will give ideas.